Isaac told him before he left, whatever you do, don't marry a woman from the wrong family. I'm not going to see you for a long time. Don't you come back here with a Canaanite wife. That's what he tells him in chapter 28, 1. He says, go to your grandfather's house and marry a wife from your uncle's family. And he pronounced another blessing on him. And he sent him on his way in chapter 28, verse 5. Um, Esau continues to marry the wrong women after Jacob left. Now, Jacob runs and runs and runs until he can run no more. And he finally reaches a place until he's so, ex so exhausted that a stone becomes his pillow and he thinks that's just fine. I'm sure he wrapped some of his clothes around it. But chapter 28 says he came to a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he had a dream. And behold, a ladder. This Hebrew word, which this English version translates ladder, can also be translated staircase. He saw a way of walking between earth and heaven. He saw a way that someone could get up to heaven from earth or that someone could get down to earth from heaven. That's what he saw. It was set on earth with its top reaching to heaven and behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. In other words, he saw angels going up and down on that ladder. Where do we see that in the New Testament? Does anybody know? I haven't asked you many questions this week and it's already Friday. Where do you see that in the New Testament? The expression, angels of God ascending and descending. Where do you see that? Revelation. Well, probably something like that in Revelation. Turn to John 1. John chapter 1. I want to show you something. If you were in the John course, you already heard this. Um, when Nathanael meets the Lord Jesus Christ in John 1 verse 47, when Jesus sees Nathanael, he says, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Behold an Israelite in whom there is no deception. That's John 1, 47. Now, who in the Bible was the person who was first called Israel? Say it out loud. Jacob. 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 And what was the prominent character quality of Jacob. Deception. Deception. So when Jesus meets Nathanael, he says, Behold an Israelite in whom there's no deception, there's no guile, there's no cunning. So what was he saying? What he was saying was this, and I'm quoting from a New Testament scholar called F.F. F. Bruce. What he said was, Behold an Israel in whom there is no Jacob. Okay? Behold an Israel in whom there is no Jacob. Now, after there's one more little exchange between Nathaniel and Jesus, very, very quickly, Jesus convinces Nathanael that he is the Messiah and Nathanael confesses faith. Look at verse 49. Nathanael says, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. You see, Nathanael had come to faith because in verse 47, Jesus says, you're an Israelite. And in verse 49, Nathanael says, yeah, that's right, and you're the King of Israel. 
So what's he saying? He's saying, you're my king. You're the son of God and you're my king. That's who you are. Now look at verse 50. When we studied John 1, we said that this was the disciples' motto. This is the disciples' commitment. This is what the disciple says. Jesus says, Because I said to you that I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You shall see greater things than me. The disciple says, Because Jesus says it, I believe it, and later I will see it. The unbeliever says, if I see, see it, I will believe what you say. You see the difference? The follower of Jesus says, I believe it because Jesus says it, and one day I'll see it. That's faith. The unbeliever says, no, 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 don't talk to me about faith. If you show it to me, then I'll, I'll believe it. If I see it, then I'll believe what you say. What you say has nothing to do with it. It's just what I see. The believer says, that Jesus' words are better than sight. If Jesus says it, I'll believe it, and for sure one day I will see it. And then Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, you shall see the heavens opened, here it is, John 1, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. You see, when he says, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile, that's not the only reference to Jacob. That's verse 47. There's another reference to Jacob in verse 51. Because what Jacob saw at Bethel in Genesis 28, 12, he saw a ladder and he saw the angels of God going up and down it. The angels of God ascending and descending the ladder. Jesus told Nathanael, one day you will see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. One day you will see what Jacob saw. That's what he's saying. I told you that Isaac was a picture of Christ. And I told you that the ram caught by his horns in a crown of thorns in the bushes in chapter 22 was a picture of Christ. That ladder in chapter 28 is a picture of Christ. How can you get from earth to heaven? Well, you could go up a ladder. How many ladders are there? There's just one. There's just one. His name is Christ. In the Chronicles of Narnia, which I hope you've read, there is a Christ figure called Aslan. He's not Christ. He's a Christ figure. He's not Christ. He's someone invented to remind us of Christ. And there's an occasion when a young girl is approaching the stream of water and Aslan is between the young girl and the stream of water. And the, and the young girl is afraid of the lion. And she says, will you go away while I drink? And he said, no. And she said, will you promise me that I won't get hurt? He said, I make no promises. And then she said, well, I guess I'll have to go and find another string. And Aslan said, there is no other string. There is no other ladder. What about the angels descending? We talked about going up the ladder. What about coming down the ladder? Remember the word angel in Hebrew and Greek means messenger. What if someone claims to be speaking for God? What, what if they claim to be a prophet, but they say something different 
than what Jesus said. Well, there's only one way the messenger gets from heaven to earth, and that's down the ladder. That's down the staircase. And the ladder is Christ. There's only one through whom a message comes from heaven, and that is Christ. Christ or His prophets. The prophets who point forward to Him or the prophets who point back to Him and who get their authority from Him. So there's only one way to get down with a message. And there's only one way to get up to heaven. And that way is Christ. Um, also in John 1, John the Apostle who wrote the fourth gospel but who never names himself, and Andrew, his friend, stop being followers of John the Baptist and begin to be followers of Jesus of Nazareth. So they, they turn away from John and they begin to follow Jesus. And they're following him and all of a sudden Jesus stops and he turns and he looks at them and he says, what are you seeking? Basically he says, my translation, what do you guys want? And basically what they say is, we just want to see where you live. And he said, come on. And you know, that's one of the reasons I became a Christian. It's one of the main reasons I became a Christian. I just want to see where he lives. And the only way to see where he lives is to follow him there. That's what they did. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com. So Jacob comes and he has this vision. And he doesn't know it, but it's a vision of Christ. Jacob doesn't know much. He's, not, he's a good cook, but he's not a good theologian. And uh, he sees this vision while he's sleeping, this vision of this, while he's dreaming, this, this vision of, of the ladder in verse 12 with the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And it says, Behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. What does that mean? It means that just as I led them, I will lead you. It means just as I bless them, I will bless you. I'm not somebody else. And you don't need a new God with each new generation. I don't die when your grandfather dies, and I don't die when your father dies. I'll be your God just as I was their God. You won't need a new God. The land on which you lie, I will give it to you and to your descendants. So the covenant is renewed by God in the dream to Jacob. Your descendants shall be like the dust of the earth, and in your descendants shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 15. Now, when I was a child, I was taken to church. And in the Sunday school, in the church I went to, when you were six years old, in the first grade class, for the first time in your life at Sunday school, you were given a memory verse a verse to try to remember. My birthday was in October and the new class started in September. So I wasn't quite six. I was five years old. And the first verse I was ever given in Sunday school was the words, I will be with you and I will keep you. And I never forgot it. Even though I wasn't a believer. And that, those words are from Genesis 28, 15. They didn't give us the whole verse. We were just five years old. Just part of it. I am with you, and I will keep you. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. George Whitfield, the great English evangelist who crossed the the Atlantic Ocean 13 times between Britain and America. He actually died in America in 1770. Whitfield said, until God is finished with me, I am immortal. Until God is done with me, I can't die. 
That's what he was saying. I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Genesis 28, 15. 